Welcome to Radflix 1986. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe opinionated. What is a rad flick? A rad flick is a movie that has stood the test of time, voted on today by six normal people on the normal people panel. We feel pretty confident in these movies from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. And we're just sick of that shit. It got uh, rewarded back in 1986, best movies of the year, blah, blah, blah. Well, they didn't have time on their side. And these movies are all time-tested, raddest flicks of 1986. In 1986, Platoon won Best Picture, and Oliver Stone won Best Director for Platoon as well. Marley Matlin won Best Actress for Children of a Lesser God. And Paul Newman won Best Actor for The Color of Money, Martin Scorsese's follow-up to The Hustler. In 1986, we also lost James Cagney, Cary Grant, and Donna Reed. Donna Reed from It's a Wonderful Life. Also, hockey goalie legend Jacques Plant. Jacques Plant from the Montreal Canadiens. Have a look at and, and other teams, but Jacques Plant, one of the greatest goaltenders in the NHL, in NHL history. I mean, he used to goaltend without a mask on. He was taking pucks to the face. I'm pretty sure he was the first person to wear a mask or one of the first to wear a mask in the NHL. I think it was on one of those Canada heritage moments when I was a kid. Rest in peace as well to Cliff Burton, the bass player and songwriter from Metallica. Died in a horrific bus accident, 1986. 1986, also Buckner, on uh, first Sarah Mookie Wilson off the Mookie Wilson hit 1986 ALF debuts ALF debuts 1986 Oprah Winfrey goes national national debut uh, Jerry Garcia from the Grateful Dead has a five day diabetic coma Diego Maradona scores the hand of God goal in the World Cup Steve Smith from the Edmonton Oilers blows it and banks one off the goalie's skate into his own net it's okay Gretzky would uh hand him the cup first the next year when they won the cup again the greatest hockey team of all time the Edmonton Oilers uh 1986 there's a, the disaster at Chernobyl mini series about Chernobyl that won a bunch of awards a few years back it's excellent deserved all the awards if you haven't seen it check it out it's uh it's pretty frightening what went down there what could have gone down that's an eye-opener for sure uh Al Capone that's when uh Geraldo Rivera opened the vault Al Capone's vault and there's nothing in it beastie boys came out with license to ill and rick rubin they're working on the beats classic album from def jam mike tyson becomes the heavyweight champion of the world the youngest ever okay here we are in front of uh the old vhs collection credit to john who uh, gave me a whole whack of his old vhs tapes when i was a kid i was lucky i used to babysit for these people and they had literally they had a thousand vhs tapes and uh so i would basically would rent them from them I think my sister-in-law and great friends put on these stickers here and they numbered them all. And I'm pretty sure it went 900 and something and they kept buying them after that. So borrowed them all. And then one day I said, if uh, you ever get rid of those VHSs, let me know. And at the time it seemed like ridiculous, like that would never happen. And then one day they called me up and I said, yes, I took them. I couldn't let my uh, 12 year old self say no. So I, yeah, I took them and I still have quite a few of them still to this day. Comedy section for the most part. Major League is still in the wrapper. Monty Python over here. Waterworld, I liked Waterworld. Twins, uh, Weekend at Bernie's I spot in there. Little Giants with Ed O'Neill. Cop and a Half. And Cuns and Roses, live in Tokyo. First category is Raddest Horror. Raddest Horror or Suspense for 1986. First movie is David Lynch, Blue Velvet. Suspense, Strange. It's one of my favorite David Lynch movies. A bit artsy fartsy and it's not going to be on every list in here next up for horror suspense we have the fly directed by david cronenberg starring jeff goldblum and gina davis a scientist experiment goes horribly wrong uh, transforming him into a creature next up we have poltergeist 2 directed by brian gibson poltergeist 2 the other side next for horror suspense, we get Aliens, directed by James Cameron from 1986, the follow-up to Ridley Scott's Alien. What a daunting task and what a success. One of the greatest sequels ever. Michael Bem and Sigourney Weaver. And Ellen Ripley, this time she returns to face the alien menace on a distant planet. The finale is, you know, gets talked about a lot. Next up, directed and written by Stephen King, Maximum Overdrive from 1986. And this one makes me... Think of uh, Tristan, Tristan from the Tristones, who's given us music in here too. And I think the only time I ever watched a show was over at his house. Honestly, thought it would be a lot cooler just because uh, I loved the soundtrack. I loved that was kind of what got me into ACDC was a soundtrack to this uh, Who Made Who. 
the soundtrack to Maximum Overdrive. Stephen King's a massive ACDC fan. He even had a radio station that only played ACDC. He, owned, he did own it at one time. I think it was or somewhere over in Maine or close to where he lived. Maximum Overdrive is a movie about machines taking over and killing people. And I think it starred Emilio, starring Pat Hingle and Emilio Estevez. I just remember the vending machine with the pop uh, in particular. Up next, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 came out in 1986. So the follow-up to the incredibly gross and campy first movie. They still scare me to this day. I tried watching the first one again recently and I had to close my eyes and stuff like that. I couldn't even, I couldn't do it. Number two comes in uh, from 1986. It's a finalist. Last but not least, uh, for finalist for Radis Horror, Suspense of 1986 goes to Critters. Yikes. 80s was was such a different time. It's so cool. You know, really in the 80s is when you could first rent movies. You have to just wait for them to come on television or maybe return to the movie theater. Movie renting was a thing already when I was just a little kid because I'm a kid of the 80s. You don't understand. Like, that's really the only way you could watch a movie when you wanted to was to go to the video store and to rent it. I just picture the, the covers going to the to the rental store and seeing all of them there. That's how you knew about movies. I mean, that's how I knew about movies was just by reading the covers up there. And so the horror section was not a very big section and I can picture the covers. So Critters is one of the ones where I can definitely picture the cover. And the raddest horror movie of 1986 goes to Aliens from James Cameron. This is where suspense comes in, right? So this is the first one. It's not really a true horror movie. This is more a suspense action sci-fi. But Aliens is the raddest of 1986 for horror, suspense. And in second place, Stephen King directed Maximum Overdrive from a Stephen King story. So his stories finally realized doesn't have to deal with one of those pesky movie directors. Respect to being one of the greatest authors of my life, Stephen King. I'm not ready to say you're the greatest director yet, but I love your soundtrack too. I mean, you got all the makings of something great. Maybe it's, maybe Emilio Estevez was holding you back. Next, Radis Drama. 1986. The finalists are final. The finalists are for Radis Drama. First off, Karate Kid Part Two. Karate Kid Two. Now this is the one where well, what happens? Miyagi. Miyagi needs to go back to Okinawa because his dad is sick, and he tells Daniel that you know he's bringing Daniel with him to keep him from going with his mom for the summer. Maybe mom didn't sign him to movie number two. I can't remember if she's in the end of it or not. Miyagi brings Daniel's son to Okinawa because his dad is sick. And he tells him on the way there that he left in shame because of some sort of quarrel with his friend. His friend wanted to marry the same girl as him. And there was an arranged marriage, yada, yada, yada. As a child, um, for whatever reason, I had a copy of this one. Next up for Radis Drama, 1986, we're looking at Top Gun with Tom Cruise. Went and watched the sequel to this just a couple of years ago, whenever that came out. It was pretty good. Talk to the old heartstrings, so he lands in Radis Drama, 1986. Top Gun is a finalist. Another finalist uh, from John Hughes this time, Pretty in Pink, starring Molly Ringwald. Next up from Oliver Stone, Platoon. Now, this movie got all kinds of praise, won Best Picture. Of all the war movies to win best picture i can think of five that are better it's not the raddest flick of 1986 i'll give you that much i really like oliver stone's movies this is a great vietnam drama next up david lynch is starring kyle mclaughlin and um isabella rosalini in blue velvet dennis hopper my lord this movie frightens me it's david lynch so either you're with david lynch or you're not modern day master i know my hero is stanley kubrick and his favorite movie later in life was Eraserhead, which is one of uh, david lynch's movies doesn't get as much love as some of the more famous ones but i i, I think blue velvet's an incredible movie dennis hopper is just freaky in the show director rob reiner movie for Radis Drama, Stand By Me. This is based off of a Stephen King's short story in the book. The book was called Different Seasons. The short story, I believe, was called The Body. Incredible book. Two of the other short stories I can think of are made into movies. That was Apt Pupil, that one where that kid spots the Nazi on the bus. The other one was Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Later on became a great movie in 1994, directed by Frank Darabont. Anyway, Stand By Me is in the same book. Two of my favorite movies, really. This stars Will Wheaton and River Phoenix. Four boys going on an adventure uh, looking for a, a dead body. One of my absolute favorite movies 
period of all time. Stand By Me, the soundtrack, growing up with the soundtrack, all of those songs mean a lot to me, the whole record. It was special. It was one of the only kind of tapes or whatever that we had that we thought was kind of hip. Lard ass uh, in the pie eating competition. The leech scene, the boys just walking up and down, the train scene. The tree house, Stand By Me, is a finalist for Radist Drama 1986. Next up for Radist Drama 1986, going with The Fly. The Fly is a finalist for Radist Drama of 1986. That one was directed by Dave Cronenberg with Jeff Goldblum. Next up, starring Gene Hackman, we're going with Hoosiers for Radist Drama 1986. Another oddball vote from Caro. We're going with River's Edge. I'm just kidding. It's a great movie. 1986. That's another finalist for Radist Drama 1986. Another finalist is Manhunter. And the final finalist for Radist Drama 1986 goes to Martin Scorsese. Scorsese's The Color of Money. Uh, Scorsese has a list on this channel. 10 greatest Martin Scorsese movies. The Color of Money, spoiler alert, is on that list. Links in the description. Links in the description as well for Lauren Falls Music playing at the end of the link in the description as well for the Patreon. And there's also a playlist in the description that you can check out all of the trailers for the movies that were mentioned in this episode. Like and subscribe. This started in 1980. We're in 1986. And uh, we plan on going all the way to the early 2000s before circling back to the 70s and there's lots of music music episodes on the channel as well Radis Drama 1986 goes to Stand By Me from Rob Reiner love this one Radis Drama of 1986 I'm glad this one won almost went across the board for Radis Drama of the Year which would have been I think only the second time that's happened maybe the first time the only jackass on the panel that didn't pick it is the Radis Drama picked Pretty in Pink instead and I'll leave Joe Two's name out of this he's also the one who put in Karate Kid 2 <laughs> and Top Gun. <laughs> Maybe he's just not a fan of Stand By Me. We'll, we'll find out. Roast him in the comments, would you? Up next, 1986, let's go with uh, Radis Comedy. Police Academy Part 3, Back in Training. This is the one I'm pretty sure where Bobcat Goldway debuted. Steve Gutenberg. Man, I loved the Police Academy movies when I was a kid. The guy that did all the voices, I can't remember his name. Bubba Smith. In this new one, New recruits face rigorous training. Three and four, I really liked a lot. Directed by John Landis, going with The Three Amigos, starring Martin Short, Chevy Chase, and Steve Martin. Ka-ka, ka-ka. It's a movie about these three guys are actors, the old West. They get sent on a mission that they think is a, 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 another acting gig. Turns out to be real. Next finalist for Raddest Comedy of 1986 goes to John Hughes, starring Matthew Broderick and Alan Ruck in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. An old Ben Stein there calling, the, doing the roll call. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Soundtrack's excellent. For me, the ultimate teen coming of age comedy. John Hughes in his prime for 1986. Next up, we have Crocodile Dundee. Paul Hogan and Crocodile Dundee. Thoughts not annoyed. Thoughts annoyed. Anytime a knife ever came out, ever camping up until I was probably like 20 years old. Anytime somebody showed a knife, thoughts not annoyed. Thoughts annoyed. It's another thing I remember being at the video store. VCR at that point in the suitcase. You know, those big VCR suitcase things and bringing it home and set it up the night or the maybe possibly the weekend I remember seeing a wall of crocodile dundee vhs cassettes for rental uh, we've got karate kid 2 getting another shout out this time in comedy so i don't think that mr miyagi thought things were that funny caro karate kid 2 getting a shout out breaking mr miyagi's heart carol next up for comedy big trouble little china that's john carpenter starring kurt russell in a very incredibly rad movie i mean it's uh it could the logo of Radflex could just be a photo of the cover of Big Trouble Little China. That movie's got rad all over it. It makes it into raddest comedy because it's definitely a, one of those ones that covers quite a few categories. Next up, another John Hughes, Pretty in Pink, starring Molly Ringwald. Hannah and her sisters. Oh, I'm glad that makes the list. So that's a Woody Allen, hilarious movie. And last, directed by Alan Metter. The movie is Back to School, starring Roddy Dangerfield. Roddy Dangerfield, if you don't know, is one of the greatest stand-up comedians of all time is Rodney Dangerfield and he did movies and lights out in all of them even Ladybugs I'll give him credit for Ladybugs watch him on Johnny Carson I love uh, Norm Macdonald's tributes to Rodney Dangerfield coming on uh, talk shows and just basically playing it up like <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield so cool it's kind of the Billy Madison thing but 10 years earlier Rodney Dangerfield 
back to school. And the winner of Raddus Comedy 1986 goes to Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Raddus Comedy of 1986. Director John Hughes, Raddus Comedy is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Close second place, The Three Amigos, starring Chevy, Steve Martin, and Martin Short. Directed by John Landis. Third place runner-up goes to The Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. Next category is Action, Sci-Fi, Adventure, Raddus for 19. 19- 86. And the finalists are Cobra, Sly Sloan mentioned here for Cobra, 1986. We've got The Golden Child starring Eddie Murphy. I remember watching this one quite a bit. I think I had it on cassette. I think I recorded it. The Golden Child. And just because it was Eddie Murphy at the time, I was definitely in an Eddie Murphy kick. Next finalist is Big Trouble, Little China. Yeah, director John Carpenter starring Kurt Russell and Kim Cattrall. So Kim Cattrall, she's in a lot of movies so far on Radflix. Certified Rad Kim Cottrell certified rad around my house very famous for sex in the city got roped into a sex in the city tour in New York City uh, my first day in New York City, actually, my partner to on a Sex in the City tour because she was such a big fan. On the tour, ran into Paul Pfeiffer from one of my favorite shows, The Wonder Years. So that was dope. Anyways, shout out Kim Cottrell. You're awesome. You're rad. You're in Big Trouble Little China, which is just a phenomenal action sci-fi movie. So definitely in the finals here. Top Gun. Top Gun finishes action. I mean, that's a, just an action super film. Tom Cruise. This is the one that kind of blew him up into a huge action star next up action sci-fi adventure raddest movies of 1986 finalist platoon it's a drama i mean there's definitely action it's a war movie it's uh so yeah so i guess later on like saving private ryan is something sort of similar to this where yes there are some action scenes it's that's why we've got this amazing panel of normal people next finalist is from james cameron it's aliens the sequel to alien we talked about earlier next finalist action sci-fi adventure transformers the movie 1986 i actually forgot about that one next finalist for action sci-fi adventure what the Ian. Maximum Overdrive. Uh, Maximum Overdrive was much more appreciated than I ever realized. Anyway, hey, there you go. Stephen King got a raddest action sci-fi. We also get Highlander. Highlander makes the finals for raddest movie, raddest sci-fi, action adventure 1986. Labyrinth. I mean, George Lucas, Jim Henson, David Bowie. Uh, Labyrinth is such a quirky 80s experiment. I love it. I love anything Jim Henson is uh, certified rad. We've mentioned that earlier on in this series you throw in george lucas in there george lucas who's been all over the rad flicks list so far with uh, indiana jones and the star wars trilogy the original the winner for raddest action adventure sci-fi 1986 goes to raddest action sci-fi adventure movie of 1986 is james cameron's aliens second raddest action sci-fi adventure movie 1986 goes to big trouble little china from john carpenter and one of my very favorite john carpenter movies and i mean i don't think that's a very uncommon question answer to that question and third it goes to top gun tom cruise top gun next up next up on rad flicks Next category is Family Movie Night. So Raddest Family Movie of 1986. First nominee is Castle in the Sky. Hayao Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli. Castle in the Sky. If you have not seen any of these, they're all on uh, Netflix right now. Japanese animation. They are better than Disney movies. Disney cartoons, in my opinion. They're made more for the family. This is the one that really kind of got them off the ground was Castle in the Sky in 1986. You will hear me mention them pretty much every year from Europe on going forward on every list so creative when i think of the of their movies i think of the wizard of oz it's a groundbreaking movie that's just so different and creative and you have all these different characters and different rules to reality like tolkien did with lord of the rings and and the hobbit and those books where he's inventing along the way these movies do the same thing next finalist for family movie night is stand by me from rob reiner we talked about that one already uh finalist for raddest family movie short circuit john badham starring ali sheedy and steve gutenberg johnny five two sequels there's definitely one sequel anyways this was very cool when i was a kid there wasn't a lot of robot movies short circuit 1986 next finalist is american tale and uh, this is one of my wife's favorite uh cartoons and soundtracks as well 
family movie night, American Tale. American Tale is a doozy. And that'll get the tears flowing. It was actually, it was, they were singing it either today or yesterday. A lot of music played in our house. Directed by Don Bluth, my one of my heroes in it, Jimmy Stewart. Jim Stewart. Jim Stewart. From It's a Wonderful Life um, and all the old Frank, Frank Capper movies. And Philip Glazer is also in it. Up next, The Great Mouse Detective. A lot of mice this in this year's family movie night. Barry Ingham and Vincent Price do the voices in The Great Mouse Detective. Next up, Labyrinth. Like I said before, from Jim Henson, David Bowie, George Lucas. That's a triple threat of people that your kids should all know. So family movie night, Labyrinth. Next, Roddy Dangerfield's Back to School. Okay, okay. Got another wise guy. This guy's. This time it's Caro. I'm bringing that in as a finalist. Peggy Sue got married. So that's Francis Ford Coppola and Nicolas Cage. Peggy Sue got married. Family movie night. Uh, next finalist is The Three Amigos. We already mentioned that one a few times. So that's a finalist. Jesse again, uh, Top Gun. Top Gun for family movie night. Finalist for family movie night. Before we announce the winner is Ferris Bueller's Day Off from John Hughes again, Matthew Broderick. And the winner goes to, for raddest family movie of 1986, goes to Labyrinth. And the runner-ups for raddest family movie of 1986, a tie between Short Circuit and The Three Amigos. Almost a three-way tie, but not by what missing by one point would be an American tale. So raddest family movie of 1986 goes to Labyrinth. Most watched movie of 1986. This is where you get to know a little bit more about the panel. Third to most watched. From Joe 2, third, Back to School. Second, Golden Child with Eddie Murphy. Love that. And number one is Big Trouble in Little China. From Jesse, Stand By Me. Second most watched is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And his most watched movie of 1986 is Labyrinth. Bob, third most watched. Short Circuit. Second is Crocodile Dundee. Most watched movie of 1986 for Bob is The Great Mouse Detective. From Caro. Second, she's got Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And most watched for 1986 is going to Karate Kid Part 2. From Ian. Third is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Second most watched Big Trouble Little China. And most watched of 1986 goes to Alien. For myself, mo uh, third most watched is Big Trouble Little China. Second most watched Stand By Me. But nothing came close for me for uh, to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And that's also the most watched by the panel overall. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, directed by John Hughes and written by John Hughes. Raddest movie of 1986. The finalists are Ferris Bueller's Day Off, starring Matthew Broderick. Stand By Me, directed by Rob Reiner, written by Stephen King. Aliens, directed by James Cameron, starring Sigourney Weaver. It's Ripley. Platoon, starring Charlie Sheen, directed by Oliver Stone, Vietnam War epic. Top Gun, Starring Tom Cruise. Blue Velvet, directed by David Lynch. The Golden Child, starring Eddie Murphy. Back to School, starring Rodney Dangerfield. What's going to be the raddest movie of 1986? Well, for the first time, it's a tie. The raddest movie of 1986 is a, is a dead heat tie between Ferris Bueller's Day Off, directed by John Hughes, and Aliens, directed by James Cameron. So it first tie second place also comes in as, as a tie so runner-ups for raddest movies of 1986 is the tie between stand by me and big trouble in little china directed by john carpenter and that does it so i just want to remind you to like comment and subscribe i'd love to know what your raddest movies of 1986 are if you're trying to think of some movies, well, we've got all the movies mentioned in this episode below in one playlist. Also, there's additional movies that didn't quite make the final round. My channel is called Joe Opinionated. It's at my friend Joe on YouTube. Remember to be normal, live and let live. Feel free to gank our list as if it's your own. Next episode is 1987 with you know, 100% fire. I mean, we're just in the, we're in the home stretch here of the greatest years of film of my life, basically from about 1985 to 1995. I'm sorry, I'm a little low on facts and high, and high on, opinions. on opinions. Respect to the raddest movies of 1985: Aliens and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Catch you next time.